The C-SPAN networks bring you long-form public affairs programming from the nation's capital and are a public service of your television provider. C-SPAN, created by cable. What impact did the movie have on you? <laughs> well, I've lost some degree of anonymity that I had before, uh, so that's one impact. Uh, the other is that um, I think people are recognizing the kind of quality work that we did 14 years ago. Who uh, owned the paper then? Uh, the paper, the Boston Globe was owned by the New York Times Company at that time. It uh, was sold uh, about uh, two years ago, right about the same time the Washington Post uh, was sold to Jeff Bezos. So. Um, we, uh, it, it's had a, an, an enormous impact in terms of drawing attention to this work and to the entire team. And we have gone uh, essentially 14 years without that degree of attention. Of course, we won the Pulitzer Prize for public service for that work in the year 2003, uh, but, um, or the prize was awarded in 2003. But uh, the level of attention that comes with a movie is well beyond the level of attention that comes with winning a Pulitzer Prize. Then the other impact is on the Catholic Church uh, and the priesthood. Uh, Marianne Glendon, mm -hmm. you know her? I, I know of her. She's a Harvard Law professor. She was the ambassador from the United States to the Vatican, or they call it the Holy See. This is back November the 4th, 2002, when she made a speech. I just want to read some of this and get your reaction to it. For months, the press created a climate of hysteria by describing the story as a pedophilia crisis when in fact only a tiny minority of reported cases involve pedophiles, abusers of prepubescent children as distant from homosexual relations with teenage boys. Well, we didn't describe it just as a pedophilia crisis, we described it as abuse of, uh, of young people. So, and it wasn't just boys, by the way. So in some instances, it was young women or adult women as well. But for the most part, it was young boys, uh, and some of that was pedophilia, and some of it was, were, they were boys of, a, of an older age. Also, she wrote, she spoke, she says, I think you can see why I thought it irrelevant to call it the awful disclosures of Maria Monk. The worst offender by far has been the Boston Globe, which ran 250 stories in 100 days, many on its front pages, creating a climate of hysteria, the likes of which has not been seen in Boston since the Ursuline convent was burnt down, and that was in 1834. Right. Uh well, I don't think we created an environment of hysteria. That's ridiculous. And uh, many of our other quotes, and maybe you'll get to them. Uh, yeah, were, just one more. After one more, second. okay. Uh, were equally ridiculous. Uh, look, uh, the fact is, is that there was abuse by priests of hundreds and hundreds of, uh, of uh, young people, particularly boys. And, uh, and what, hap what did the church do in these cases of abuse? It covered it up. It covered up not just once, it covered it up repeatedly, and it was a cover-up that lasted for many decades. And what did we do? We disclosed that cover-up. And I feel very proud of that, that work. Father Gagan go to prison before or after your stories? He went to prison after the stories. And then he was murdered? He was murdered, yeah. He was strangled and stomped on by his fellow inmate. And how many boys did he uh, uh, assault? I think it was about 100, if I recall correctly. Last quote from Marianne Glennon, an attorney, teaches at the law school at Harvard. I often hear it said that the Globe will receive a Pulitzer Prize, and you did, for its reporting on this matter. All I can say is that if fairness and accuracy have anything to do with it, awarding the Pulitzer Prize to the Boston Globe would be like giving the Nobel Peace Prize to Osama bin Laden. Right. I mean, I think that that is a, you know, people ask me if there were any scenes that uh, I wish had been in the movie. I wish that scene had been in the movie. I wish that quote from that speech had been in the movie because it's so outrageous. Uh, to compare us to terrorists, I think, is just uh, abominable. And it's amazing to me that a woman in her position, uh, someone who, uh, who ultimately became the U.S. ambassador to the Vatican, would say something like that. Even the, the, even the Catholic Church would not say that today. The Vatican would not say that today. And they do not say that today. Here's a clip from the actual movie and uh, see if anybody recognizes. You're not in it, in it but you're played in it. Let's watch. Law had to know. That's why he had the reaction. Because he knew there were others. I think that's the bigger story. But the numbers clearly indicate that there were senior clergy involved. That's all they do. Indicate. Are you telling me that, that if we run a story with 50 pedophile priests in Boston... Mike, we'll get into the same catfight you got into on Porter, which made a lot of noise, but changed things not one bit. We need to focus on the institution, not the individual priests. 
practice and policy. Show me the church manipulated the system so that these guys wouldn't have to face charges. Show me they put those same priests back into parishes time and time again. Show me this was systemic, that it came from the top down. Is that you? That is me, or someone who looks like me. I tell people I was four inches taller in 2001. And when you watch the movie, how much of it represented what you think is the, exactly the way you did it? I think the movie's uh, quite faithful to the broad outline of the, how the investigation unfolded. I think it's important to keep in mind that it's a movie, it's not a documentary. So, uh, and you had to compress within two hours uh, a seven month plus investigation, including things that happen afterwards. And you had to introduce a lot of characters and you had to introduce uh, the important themes that emerged over the course of that investigation. So I, I'm very pleased with how the movie portrays what happened.